Hello, dear friends. My name is Ye Changdong from South China Agricultural University. It is my honor here to give you my presentation of the impact and evolution processes of urban renewal on social equity of public space from supply demand perspective. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. And here in this page is my personal information. My research interest mainly includes urban renewal, rural revitalization, urban and rural planning, national parks, land use planning, and so on, which is in red color here. My presentation will include four sections, which are the backgrounds and concepts of our research in section one and section two. And then there are two brief introduction of our research of urban renewal from demand and supply side perspective in section three and section four respectively. Our research comes from the National Natural Science Foundation of China. The main purpose of uh, this research includes analyze the historical stage of urban renewal in China, introduce an evaluation index system of social equity for public space with Chinese characteristics, use supply demand analysis model to analyze the impact of urban renewal on public space. From the supply side, which includes quantity, quality, and distribution of public space. From the demand side, which includes special differentiation of residents who were influenced by urban renewal and the change of their social economical status, which influence their use of public space. And finally, research on the evolution processes and impact mechanism of urban renewal on social equity of public space from city level and project level. Generally speaking, our research based on two backgrounds. And the first background is that urban renewal has become becoming the main urban growth pattern nowadays. From the figures in this page, on the left side is the traditional urban growth pattern where the urban area expanding from central outwards to rural area and thus is a small growth pattern. While the figure on the right side shows the new urban growth pattern nowadays, here we can see the urban area almost stop growth outwards, but growth instead of infilled mainly by urban renewal. And the second background is that both supply and demand side of urban public space are important for social equity. And the change of the concept of social equity includes three stages. In the first stage, the concept of equity concerns the fairness or justice of the distribution of resources. In the second stage, Equity does not mean equal distribution of public goods for all groups, rather it emphasizes the provision of goods or service in proportion in needs or demand. And in the third stage, equity entails both horizontal and vertical dimensions, while 
horizontal equity means equitable distribution of public goods service across regions or places, which refers to supply side. Vertical equity means equitable distribution of resources among different social economic groups, which refers to the demand side. And section two is a concept which comes from a paper of a review of research on public space in urban renewal from supply demand perspective. In this research, we aim to provide a new research perspective. We summarize the supply demand research of urban renewal into four stages. The first stage is material space supply and basic living demand before 1950s. The second stage is residence space supply and housing demand between 1950s and 1970s. The third stage is industrial space supply and economic demand between 1980s and 1990s. And finally, the fourth stage is multiple space supply and demand of cultural, technological, and ecological from 1990s. Just as shown in this page, the figure includes four stages of this research. And in this page, we summarize the topics of urban renewal from demand and supply sides. Which in the demand side includes the studies on population, industrial, aging, children, females, and so on. While in the supply side, which includes green space, public space, health facilities, sports facilities, and cultural facilities, and so on. And section three is a research of urban renewal from demand side. States led urban development or redevelopment and gentrification the social special restructuring in Guangzhou from 2000 and 2010. And this research reviews theories, empirical literature, and policy documents that are relevant to our understanding of urban development or redevelopment and the social special structuring of urban neighborhoods since 2000 in China. Special attention is paid to the city of Guangzhou as a case study. We primarily draw on the gentrification literature to inform our study. Comparing China with the Western context, we discuss forms of gentrification, theoretical approaches, as well as displacement outcomes of gentrification. And we argue that gentrification in China needs to be linked to the state-led, land-centered urban development strategy. We then review the institutional and policy contexts of China's urban development with discussion on relevant market reforms and land development policies. The main purpose of this research is to use Guangzhou as a case study to reveal the temporary trajectory of the special and social restructuring of urban neighborhoods between 2000 and 2010 and how 
the social spatial restructuring is associated with state-led urban development or redevelopment. Our research data includes from those 2000 and 2010 census data at the sub-district level. The total number of geographic units for our analysis is 196 sub-districts, which includes four layers of sub-districts. About measures and variables, we define gentrification as the social economic upgrading of a neighborhood. The change in educational and occupational compositions are commonly adopted by existing literature to indicate the changes of neighborhoods' social status. We measured gentrification with location quantities of the highly educated and professional occupations. A composite gentrification index is derived from factor analysis of the changes in the location quantities of above university degree and professional. The composite component explains 80% of the variation of the two variables. The calculated equation of location quantities is shown in this page. And our results include the six categories of the gentrification or degentrification based on the gentrification index and the changes of location quantities, which includes gentrified area, where sub-districts with a positive gent index, while low location quantities university and low location quantities professional in 2000, and higher low quantities location quantities university or higher location quantities professional in 2010. Similarly, does Rest five categories includes gentrifying, deepened gentrification, the gentrified, the gentrifying, deepened the gentrification. And three categories of sub districts is showed as in this table and in this figure. Our conclusions include, in contrast to the West, where gentrification started from and is mostly observed in dilapidating city center, gentrification in Guangzhou concentrates in suburban areas. The special pattern of gentrification is strongly associated with land driven development policies such as administrative annexation, new zone development, and urban renewal, which aimed to promote industrial upgrading and economic growth through land expropriation and commodification. New built gentrification was a key form of gentrification. Rather than displacement of disadvantaged groups, gentrification in Guangzhou is found more likely to be attributed to the inflow of gentrifiers. In particular, those in knowledge-oriented sections and the state section. Displacement is found only associated with urban renewal projects. 
His research reveals localized forms and outcomes of gentrification that are contingent on specific economic and political circumstances, which informs the theories of global gentrification. And section four is a study of urban renewal from supply side. Urban green space accessibility changes in a high density city, a case study of Macau from 2010 to 2015. And this study uses Macau, a high density city in Asia, as a case study area and tracks changes in the distribution of urban green space accessibility across the space and across population groups from 2010 to 2015. Based on the two-step floating catchment area model, the results indicate that urban green space accessibility is distributed unevenly across space and population groups in Macau. Over time, however, urban green space accessibility became more evenly distributed despite the decline in overall urban green space accessibility. Those changes are attributable to the policy of upgrading urban green spaces and building micro-scale urban green spaces. This resource sheds light on how future policies can enhance urban green space equity in high-density urban areas. And the main purpose of this study includes to examine the spatial distribution pattern of urban green space accessibility in Macau, to exploit differences in urban green space accessibility between population groups, and to track changes in urban green space accessibility from 2010 to 2015, and evaluate the effect of urban green space policies. The coin data set of urban green spaces in 2010 and 2015 come from the Civic and Municipal Affairs Bureau of Macau Special Administrative Region. Urban green spaces are divided into four categories based on their respective size and functions, showed like this table, which includes civic park, community park, garden, and courtyard. The census data includes census zone level population data from year 2010, come from the 2011 Macau population census. And we divide population into groups showed as this table in this page. We use two step floating catchment area methods to study our and this page is the concept of this methods first step is of this method is to determine the supply to demand ratio of each urban green space as the calculation equation in this page. And the distance and decay of urban green space is estimated by the Gauss equation showed as this page. The second step is to calculate 
the urban green space accessibility for census zone. The resource includes overall changes. The historical area and the border area had higher population density, but smaller urban green space area size. Wireless, the reclamation area had lower population density, but larger urban green space size. As a result, the historical and border areas are expected to have a lower access to urban green spaces than the reclamation area. Second, special distribution of urban green space accessibility. The results reveal that urban green space accessibility is unevenly distributed in Macau. But between 2010 and 2015, the distribution became evener, although most places experience decline in urban green space accessibility. The improved special equity in urban green space accessibility is partly attributed to the policy of building micro scale urban green spaces as they are evenly distributed. Upgrading urban green spaces improve service areas and thus accessibility to communities parks. It's optimized the urban green space structure of Macau. The overall decline in urban green space accessibility is mainly associated with the reduction in the total urban green space area size in urban development. And third, socioeconomic equity of urban green space accessibility. Urban green space accessibility was significantly and positively correlated with the distribution of some advantage groups, particularly employers, managers, and people from Hong Kong and Taiwan. And accessibility was negatively correlated with the distribution <coughs> of distribution of disadvantaged groups of employees, workers, and Macau natives, as the results was shown in this table. Our conclusions include the study results have policy implication to increase urban green space accessibility equity in high density cities. The main urban green space policies in Macau includes upgrading urban green spaces and building new micro scale urban green spaces. The first policy increased urban green space service area and hence accessibilities to the urban green spaces that were upgraded and it's improve the urban green space structure of Macau. The second policy increase, increases total urban green space accessibility for the places that were now served by urban green spaces before and hence improve urban green space accessibility equity. And that's all of my sharings. Thank you for your listening.